piece by piece basis. I'm not there in the office. Um, I'm sort of my own satellite. I'm not able, I do have an editor that I work closely with, um, so I'm able to advocate through her. But it's a different relationship than we've had for a lot of years in dance writing. Um, I, um, as I said, I work piece by piece. Um, I've, I've seen a lot of budget cuts in the last couple years. Um, we all know that the Chronicle has been going through some downsizing. So we're still getting, I think, quite a bit of dance in the paper. I, I'm trying to get as much as I can. Um, Part of what I was realizing as I was starting to speak tonight is that a uh, big part of me is tempted to just launch into an apology for feeling like <laughs> like I personally in the Chronicle aren't, isn't doing as much as I would like to for as rich of a dance scene as we have here. But um, I'm realizing that what's, what I'm most interested in is hearing everyone else's perspective in this room rather than sharing mine. That's going to be incredibly helpful. So. I'm going to resist the urge to apologize at length. Um, OK, <laughs> what's going on right now is, um, so there have been some cuts. Um, the editorial bias is towards, actually, towards local companies. I have an easier time right now getting local companies covered, which I think has a big upside. The downside to that is that a lot of important um, visitors that are coming through town that should be in the public conversation isn't getting covered, um, which means pretty much everything that your Buena Center for the Arts has been presenting. So, you know, there's an upside and there's a downside to that bias. Um, uh, part of what I do, and the most gratifying part of what I've been doing, is I do make recommendations for what will get covered. And um, what makes me happiest is when I'm able to go out and see an artist who hasn't been in the Chronicle and maybe wouldn't have been chosen by the editors and really make a case for that person and, and get that in the paper. That, that does happen sometimes. And um, part of what I do is go out watching uh, performances that I don't have an assignment to review, but I want to know who that person is and what they're about. Um, so um, I. I have here a note that says, necessary shallowness. <laughs> Again, resist this urge to apologize. But what that means is that, uh, just so you know how it works, when I go out and review something, my copy is due at 9 o'clock the next morning, typically. So I'm going home. I, I barely even have time to process what I've seen, and I'm trying to say something about it. And that, um, I try to work with that the best I can. The, uh, the other um, container is that I'm dealing with 300 to 500 words, which is not a lot. It used to be more like 800, got cut back to six, got cut back to five, and now the latest is that they might be going to 300. So I'm trying, um, part of what I'm doing in my own personal writing practice is trying different things with my own writing to make those words as useful as possible, now that I have fewer of them. Um, OK, given that those are the constraints I have, I personally th like to think of what I do as a, a kind of performance. That I go, um, the dancers do the, the best that they can. The lights are on for them. They do the show. I go home. I do what I can in the three hours before it's 2 o'clock in the morning, and I can't even see the computer screen anymore. And so sometimes I hit it. I think. Sometimes I say something maybe useful. Um, sometimes I really just don't. Sometimes that was just a totally off night. I just didn't hit it at all that night. It's a performance. You go on to the next time. Um, but in all cases, and really this has been building for me, I've, I've been practicing dance criticism for about 10 years now. Um, and this has really been strengthening over the last couple of years. Um, my, my motto that I, I even have pinned to my desk is try not to sneer. <laughs> I don't believe in arts criticism as a blood sport, as a way of lording my opinion as, as pronouncing judgment. That's not what I'm trying to do. Um, I've taken a lot of inspiration from uh, Deborah Jowett's writing in The Village Voice to see how, how much more perceptive someone can actually be when they're purely trying to describe something rather than going instantly to judgment mode. That said, I do think that to start a conversation, you don't want to, if you have had a strong reaction, you don't want to tiptoe around that. So I, you know, I do say evaluative things sometimes. I, I try to strike a balance with that. Um, I'm trying to have a conversation with imaginary readers, um, uh, not necessarily with 
the choreographer or the dancers, but I do like to imagine that perhaps you know, they're in the room next door and they can hear what I'm saying even though I'm not talking to them. Okay, so this all brings me to what I really see as my, my, my biggest personal goal and my role. And um, we need all kinds of dance writers and we all on this panel are a different kind of dance writer. And I'm so glad we have a variety represented here. Um, my personal goal, I really think of myself as a bridge. Um, a bridge from the dance world, the people within the dance world, to the people outside of it. Um, I think that that's actually the appropriate role for a mainstream newspaper. And it also happens to be what I really like to do by temperament. Um, I think of myself as a person who's a writer, who always wanted to be a writer, who happens to have loved dance from childhood. And so a writer who happens to love to write about dance. And I feel like the way that I can best serve dance is to write about it um, to the most engaging degree possible for an outside audience. Um, doesn't mean I don't also want to speak to the inside audience, but um, I have this still, this ideal which may be coming um, more obsolete as, as newspapers diminish of reaching um, the, the fabled general reader of having someone pick up the paper and maybe they thought they were gonna read about that movie review and they go and they see this, this review that's very enthusiastic about a modern dance piece and they think maybe they'll check out the performance. And um, I used to think that was really naive and I still sort of fear that it's a bit naive and yet I do consistently get emails from people who say that they weren't interested in dance but after picking up the Chronicle and seeing, getting used to my byline and beginning to read my things, they got hooked on it and started going to performances. And when I see that, I feel like I've actually done something good. Um, okay, that's bringing me to a couple, oh, another point, something else that I'm trying to do in my writing is um, a, a, this idea of being a bridge, is I really try to write about dance as news a performance as an event. I go to a show and I think, what was the news here? What was the event? How do I communicate to someone who doesn't necessarily know the dance scene who this artist is in the context of the, the whole Bay Area dance ecology, why they matter, where this work fits with what they've done in the past or where their work might go? What, what is it as a news event? I, feel, I think of myself as sort of a, a reporter from inside the field trying to speak to people who haven't been out on the field and maybe I'll be able to entice them to go on their own safari someday. Um, so, um, I, I do think that there are actually, there are fewer critics who write this way um, these days and I'll, I'll, I'll get to that. Um, another thing I just wanted to point to was that um, one thing that has happened, I, I wonder, if, are we gonna bring up Paul Parrish's notes? Um, someone was um, thoughtful enough to ask Paul Parrish, another dance writer in the Bay Area, for some of his uh, responses about dance writing, which I read today before this. And one point that he made was that um, the dance critics, when they had staff positions, they uh, had more of a regular venue and more of sort of like a columnist role than, than we're moving towards now. And speaking from personal experience, I feel like my dance reviewing has gotten a lot, I hope, has improved a lot over the last couple of years. And I think that the number one factor behind that has been just writing very regularly in the Chronicle and settling into this idea of having an audience that I'm comfortable with, that I'm familiar with, that I'm speaking to again and again. So um, now, that is bringing me to the big question here tonight, the future, what happens in the future as... Um, not only the Chronicle, but most newspapers are running less dance coverage and the whole role of newspapers is changing. Um, the rise of the internet. Where does a critic like me go these days if you want to write as the bridge? Um, first I want to say I think that the rise of the internet has a lot of upsides. And the number one upside is... Um, I do think that this idea of the newspaper critic as um, lording a lot of power or authority is over. Um, it's, it's going to go away, and I'm, I think that's great in a lot of ways. Um, I guess I do, in a way, buy into this idea, the cliche of the democratization of the 